Well, hello there, boys and girls. Welcome to Above Board with Canderpath. It's me, the Rich B. Oh, that rhymes, me, the Rich B. And John. What's up, John? Hey, you came in kind of low and calm on that introduction. I like that. Normally, it's like high energy. I thought I would just like, you know, kind of be like more like that that 70s, like, welcome to WDDR. Cool new year, new days. rich. That's right. New year, new rich. So uh, we we don't have our buddy Matt today. Um, we we always just feel obligated when somebody has not is not of the three of us. We just like feel like we got to call them out, and it's not to shame. It's not to shame them. It's more just because we miss we miss Matt. So hugs to you, Matt. Love you, bro. Um, it's mandatory that we listen to each other's podcasts, even when we're not on it. Even though I know when Matt and John listen, they just fast forward to the parts where they're talking and just like d- don't listen to me. Right? Do you do that? Always. Or am I, or am I projecting what I actually do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I we're I'm a big part of the post edit process, so uh, I'm I have to listen to all parts of the show. I, I love how you say you're or unfortunately. I, I love how you say you're a big part of, as as opposed to the only. <laughs> the only well, part of. no, it, not anymore. You know, shout out to Raina on our team. Uh, Raina and I have a good have a good. Um, you know, we know what we're gonna do on the post edit side. So we got Raina. I have Raina. to. Meet, I don't think I've met Raina. Have I met Raina? No, no. When I when can, like I, when can I when can I when can I come to the office and meet meet people? Anytime. Door right. open door policy. All right, I want to come. Unless we're there. Unless we're there and then you have to hit the ring doorbell and we have to tell you no one's there. Which is weird cuz I used to have a little like key pass. But yeah, no, I want to come in and meet everybody. So the next time you guys are in the office, maybe for an office meeting, you should have me come in and do like an inspirational talk. Ooh, let's do it. I don't know <gasps> if I can afford your hourly rate. Um you you could just pay me in in Chipotle. Oh, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. So today we have an interesting conversation. This is, you know, we didn't do a lot on the pre-call when we were talking about this, but it's oh. something that I'm really, really intrigued by. And it's something that, you know, whenever the three of us, something catches our attention, we want to share it on the podcast. That's kind of what we do. And and we just figure if it's interesting to us, it's interesting to you. So why not? Because we're interesting and you're interesting. So why not? John, today, this this whole podcast is is about, you know, we have a new year. We're, we're just, we're, we're, we're recording this podcast in the new year, just started 2023, um, which again, very disappointed. We don't have flying cars everywhere and like various <laughs> robots, not the fake, not like the robot vacuum cleaner things. Those don't count. I expected fully to have R2D2 by the year 2020. So a little disappointed in that. But um, regardless of the fact that I'm disappointed in that, because, you know, Elon Musk says that AI is going to take over and destroy us all. So maybe I shouldn't be disappointed. The year, did you know that he's lost 55 bill? Was it 55? No, he's the first well, person. Well, he keeps liquidating shares. I just read that he's the first person to lose $200 billion. But he's no. still worth $157 oh, billion. I was going to say that sounds painful, but knowing the situation, I don't feel too bad. Not to sidebar, but just because I know another person listening to this would have the same question because you're a financial guru. Okay. If you're worth $300 billion and you lose $200 billion, does that affect your lifestyle in any – do you think that affects his day-to-day or his lifestyle in any way? I can't imagine it has any – change at all not even not even i'm talking 0.00 now i don't know because i don't work with like billionaires like that but you know shout out to elon musk if you need a financial planner we got you covered we were gonna tag you in this everybody everybody tag elon musk on this on this podcast hey mr musk we love you i love you i watch all your launches from my house here in central florida i have the kids come out and watch so if you can ever like bring us in vip so the kids can Come to Kennedy Space Center. We'd love that. Love you, Elon. I really do. I do really look up to Elon Musk, to be honest. He's pretty cool. But I mean, we'll so manage like, like one percent of his portfolio. So I it mean, for be. real though, I I just want I, and me. You're wanting to make business. I just want to like meet him and shake his hand and like take a selfie. But because like if somebody that makes fifty thousand a year lost that equivalent percentage, it would be devastating to their day to day life. Yeah, wow, that's yeah. Fascinating hierarchy of needs. Hierarchy of needs. Right. Like think about that. We're you know at fifty thousand versus you know, 50 billion or whatever he's at. I mean, it's a different, totally different ballgame. Do you think he uses Uber Eats? I think, yeah, probably. No, no. I think he has, I think he has his own personal chef that follows him around everywhere. I was listening to a podcast. I was listening to a Tim Ferriss podcast actually last night. God, we're all over the place. Um, and the, the guest on the show, he wrote this book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Bleep. Yes, I've read that book. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was the guest on the show. And he was talking about how he wrote the book or co-wrote the book uh, for Will Smith. Um, 
and and how Will Smith has a personal chef. And that, so, I mean, if Will Smith has a personal chef, there's no question in my mind that Elon Musk probably has like a team of of chefs. I mean, wow. I mean, for that guy. So that guy ghost wrote Will Smith's book. Right. Did yeah. he get credit? What did he get credit for it in the you book? I think so. I, I didn't dig if deep. If not, in it. that think... would be that would be quite the slap in the face. Ooh. Ooh. All right, let's get focused. Focus. We want to talk about the year of one hundred nos, not oh, nos like yeah. like that, but the year of one hundred nos. John has landed on a very interesting concept. So, John, how would you, in your John way, describe what this means? briefly where you got it from and we're going to make it applicable to the to the listening audience here or the watching audience if one of the five of you that watch us on youtube so um <laughs> maybe it's six i'm we sorry we need to pump up those youtube views for we real pump those up for real okay so, so go ahead so uh everyone that knows me um knows that i'm very into making goals if matt was on the show right now he would go oh, john and his goals. John, john and his goals and a stupid vision board whatever john, yeah exactly well, which, you have to say I, it like napoleon dynamite like whatever i don't even like your vision board god well sidebar conversation on a chat conversation with uh matt and i he said something he's like sorry too busy working on my vision board as a joke <laughs> and i said is this serious yeah, of follow, course up, did. follow up with, I would love to see your vis- vision board because I aspire to your work-life balance. And I think seeing your vision board would be helpful for me. And to which he replies 10 minutes later, literally trying to figure out how to get out of this task now that I've dug myself into. So now Matt is doing a vision board. So we will check in with him on future episodes for everybody listening to see what his vision board looks like. I have mine right here. I have mine right here. I look at my vision board daily. You look at your vision board every day. Okay. Well, I moved my vision board into the, into the linen closet in the bathroom because, um, that is no place for your dreams and goals and aspirations. (laughs) There was people over and I just don't want everybody seeing what like my, you know, like some things are personal. So I moved it in there and then I, I've, I've forgotten about it. My vision board's up here, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm a walking, I'm a, I, I've got the vision board. I literally stop and do visualization almost. I haven't, I don't know how to set it on my watch, but I probably do it every 15 to 30 minutes. I stop and just close my eyes and picture the feeling of certain things that I'm working on. I mean, but still though, I can't let go of the metaphor of your visions, goals, and dreams being shoved with your dusty old shoes that you haven't There's worn nothing in dusty years. in our linen closet. You know how my wife is and me. Yeah. We're pretty clean people. So it's Very just it, with the towels and the, but I will, I will get it back out again. I'm old school vision board. Like I've got the pins and the cork and the- Oh, I love it. All right. So back to me. This is about me. This shows it's all me. About, it's always um, all about you. So I, I, love, I love making goals. I, I do them every quarter. Um, I refresh them every quarter because I feel like you need to be in like 90 day stints. I, I, you know, I think making goals at the beginning or at the end of 20, you know, at the end of the year for the next year, you get lost about three weeks into the year because things get busy and then you forget those goals. So I try to refresh them every quarter. I read this book. Um, this book is called Sustain Your Game for the five people watching us on YouTube. Um, by I, think Alan, I think it's six now. Alan Stein Jr., um, and, uh, in the book towards the end, he, you know, there, there's this, there's this section about, uh, this comedy writer, Emily Winter, who decided going into 2018 at the time, uh, as a new year's resolution for her, that it, she was going to seek out 100 rejections. So, you know, pitches to, uh, uh pitches TV to Netflix, shows, to Comedy yeah. Central, pitches yeah. for podcasts, whatever, to seek 100 rejections and not for... Not because she was a glutton for punishment, but for the idea that what better way to um, what better way to toughen my skin? What better way to um, I think the term that they used in the book was was to create post traumatic strength uh, that would come out of that. And of course, what's interesting is you know so she kind of like talks about her journey in the book, and uh, a year later, come to find out um, the yeses that she received in her journey of seeking 100 no's. You, you find out when you start asking for things that that people start saying yes more like in a, at a surprising rate. So it was a very interesting revelation for her. And I thought, you know, my goals are always over the years. You just kind of get used to doing the same thing. So my goals are, you know, uh, very metric driven. They're kind of the same. If you looked at them and you looked at you, you know five years 
five year ago goals of me go, yeah, it's kind of like a copy and paste, just more development, more progress and so on and so forth. So I thought this was what a unique way, what a unique way to look at, look at the year. And I love the idea. Nobody likes to be uncomfortable. Um, but I do love the idea that putting myself in a, in a position of discomfort, of vulnerability, I know the growth that can come out of it. I am not a public speaker. You are. But I have spoken to an audience of 50, which some people listening to this show would think like 50 people, a room of 50, like that's crazy. And I know you're hearing that and you're like, I speak to like thousands, but I have spoken to an audience of 50 before. And when I ended that, I felt amazing. I was like high as a kite on energy and excitement and enthusiasm. And then I thought, well, I want to keep doing that. I want to chase that. But leading up to it, I had butterflies. I was nervous. I felt nauseous. Um, and so it was uncomfortable, but on the flip side of that discomfort was this feeling of euphoria. Like I felt great about myself. And so, um, I wanted to do something that could put me in that position and not just do it once and, and look back and go, ah, oh, I'm proud of myself in 2023. I, you know, I asked that whale of a prospect that I had no business asking to let me, you know, pitch them working with us or, you, you just know, did. I, you asked Elon Musk at the beginning because everyone's going to be tagging him on this. Boom. Check off this number is one, one of 100. He hasn't said no yet. He hasn't That's right. said no. That's right. Um, so I just thought, what an interesting endeavor. Yeah. And I want to do it. And of course, I'm telling Matt about this. Um, and this is a funny teaser for the next, you know, in, in coming episodes. But I'm telling Matt about this. And I there were a couple things where I was like, will you go with me? Specifically, one of them was an event to see uh, this guy that I really like. His name's Ed Milet. Oh, I love um, Ed Milet. We talked. Yeah, we about were just him. talking about the, the yes. power of one more and all that. So love I love him. Ed Milet, and I was like, I, you know, and, and I happened to be like in one of his coaching programs too. But I was like, I want to put myself in a situation to be in the same room as him to introduce myself, invite him to our show, like that type of thing. Thanks for inviting me, by the way, to that. Event. Well, well, it's coming your way. Um, you're a busy guy. You're all you're jet setting all over the country. Whatever. Shut up. You hate uh, me. And so I told Matt about this, and in classic Matt fashion. He said, normally I would say no. Um, I can't speak to if he did or did not roll his eyes. But he he goes, 2023 is the year of yes for me. So I'm going to say yes. So I was like, what? It's so interesting, the dichotomy of like mine is the year of 100 no's or 100 rejections and his is the year of yes. So we're going to make Matt. We're going to there's a lot of There's a lot of mileage I can get out of this with like jokes and snarky texts that I'm going to be sending to you both. Yes. Um, well, what I love about this whole idea is I've always believed that on the other side of discomfort is growth, mm-hmm. no matter what. I mean, there, there's just yep. no way around that, right? So I have my 13-year-old going to the gym with me and I bought him uh, uh, a hoodie, a little thin hoodie from this company that I love buying my workout t-shirts from. Actually, that, it's from this this company. It, it, it's it's a... Here, they're not a sponsor. No, it's called GTOH. And I love that. So I have hustle. I have, that's the one. And his says going to hurt tomorrow. And that's always like our joke, like going to hurt tomorrow. And it's a workout thing. So, you know, you're, you're going to be sore tomorrow. And I always told him, you know, when we have a workout that's uncomfortable or difficult, or he's doing a movement or an exercise that, cause he's still learning the forms and, you know, the different things. He's very good. And he's very into it. I always tell them on the other side of discomfort is growth. If you are not sore tomorrow, you probably probably didn't do enough, at least some degree of sore, right? If you are not tired from studying, you probably didn't learn very much. If you are not all, all it, it, whether the micro to the macro, okay, whether you're talking spiritual growth, whether you're talking financial growth, whether you're talking personal growth on the other side of discomfort is growth. So I love this whole idea. I used to be an actor, John. So when I was an actor, my life was rejection. Okay. So I'm, you know, 20 years old in in New York city going for auditions in the eighties. And I'd go to one audition, you know, you're, you're too short. Thanks. I'd go to another audition. You know, we were looking for somebody a little shorter. You're, you know, your average height, but we wanted (laughs) someone this role, you have to be a shorter stockier guy. Okay. So, so height, I can't control next audition. Ah, no, blue eyes, not going to work. Next audition, uh, man, you know, if, if only you had blonde hair. Next audition, uh, you're too good looking. That actually happened one time, much to my surprise. Um, it only happened once. Then I remember auditioning for soap operas. You, All I heard was not good looking enough, not good looking enough, not leading man, more of a character, more of a bad guy look, more of the, And it just got so frustrating. And, and I, at 20 years old, you know, it just was crushing. And I, I had gone from being kind of very popular in a 
in a performing arts high school where I was the lead in a bunch of stuff to now being a small fish in a big pond. And the rejection was very tough. But on the other side of that rejection has really, really helped me to grow. I was less afraid when I was a single guy to go up to a, a, a girl and say, hey, would you like to dance? My mm-hmm. friends are terrified. I'd go up to in South Beach. I'd go up to models like way out of my league. Hey, would you like to dance? And no, no, no. Yes. You know, would you like, you know, may I buy a drink? You know, no, no. Yes. My friends were getting all, we're getting nothing because they weren't asking. Would you like to go out on a date? No, 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 no. I mean, in fairness, also, it was probably your dance moves on the dance floor because I've seen those dance moves at your, um, your 50th birthday party. I was about to say, can we say your age? But we did 54 and fit last year. I'm 55 and fit sort of. So I've seen those moves that you're 50. You know it. My point is basically though, I love, thank you. My point is though, I love this putting yourself out there and and what this this comedian this comedic writer the writer uh, did because she understands that you know if you don't take the chance you don't you don't have even the opportunity to yeah. to grow uh, you know what is this what what does this look like for you specifically you know briefly and then how can we challenge our audience to undertake this? What does this look like for you specifically? So what are you going to do? Because there's people that are in the financial planning world. And by the way, again, you know, listen to this with an open mind. If you are not a financial planner, but you are a real estate agent or a car salesperson or, you know, whatever you are, where it might have something to do with a client funnel or a sales funnel of any type, what John's going to share with you would be applicable to you. So what, what does this mean for you briefly? Well, I think I'm not unlike many people uh, that we are we are all hardwired for progress in some degree, uh, to to some degree. And and for me, I this year going into it, my mentality is progress is experiencing rejection, accepting it, figuring out how I can get better. Um, and for me specifically, and wait, um, can I ask can I ask an, an, a question right because it has to be asked right here. Yeah, are you yeah. are you good with rejection or does rejection hit you hard? Oh, uh, well, I feel like it hits me pretty hard. Okay, I just needed to know that because there's people listening that they're like, yeah. Yeah, I don't care. And then there's people that are extremely sensitive that somebody says no, it's like they feel like the world's been crushed. But so you're somebody that that rejection hits you hard. So that's important for people listening. So go ahead. I just wanted well, to ask that this, question. you know, this book that I read by Alan Stein Jr. is like 250 pages. And this is like this whole concept is literally a half a page in his book. And so it, it was the most meaningful thing I took out of the book. You know how like you, you read you read something and you take a handful of ideas. This was for me the most, I re- I've reread this like a dozen times because it hit me hard because I don't I don't accept rejection well, uh, number one. And I also think that the things that I'm I'm seeking rejection on that I want to ask for. So for example, speaking engagements for you at this stage of your career, no big deal. For me, the idea of getting up in front of an audience of of dozens to hundreds of people is like it it's it I can feel my I can feel my uh, my blood pressure rising just thinking about it. Um, and so will I probably be told no a bunch of times to, to even have the opportunity to speak in front of an audience? Yes. but eventually, I think if I ask enough, I will get a yes. And then on the other side of that is like, well, now I'm terrified that I got yes, like someone actually said yes. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I saw Simon Sinek say something about that. And he was yeah. talking about himself being a speaker. And I just literally saw this yesterday. It was like a YouTube short or something. And he said, I realized that by the fact that it used to terrify me, I'd be up on the stage, he said, with all these famous people with big TED Talks. And he was talking probably like the Brene Browns and the Tim Ferriss oh, yeah. of the world. And yeah. he was feeling very insecure about even being there. And he said, but then I realized the fact that I was even invited that somebody thought that what I have to say and what I have to bring is valuable enough that I am worthy of being here. And I started to flip my own perspective on that. So for you, when you get that yes, and you are going to you know, have the butterflies, and of course, you got me to help you if you need some help with some coaching with that stuff. But the fact that you get that yes, and this is for everybody, yes, you know, when you get that client meeting, when you get that opportunity, when you have the meeting with your boss, you can ask for a raise or make it personal. When that person you've asked out says, yeah, I'd love to go to dinner with you. Now that's the hard part you think, but now the harder part is now you got to go out to dinner and impress them and be interesting and have a conversation and not sweat through your shirt and all that kind of stuff. 
understand that the fact that you got a yes already that says something, right? That that like what Simon Sinek was saying was I was being told that somebody feels that I'm valuable and worthy enough to being there. And so that yeah. you know, because I, I don't know if I've said this to you a lot, I get rejected often. I mean, there's times that I'm yeah. up for engagements and they go, oh, we've went with this person instead, or huh. oh, we had Rich two years ago. We don't want him this year. So it happens sometimes. Or sometimes there's an unkind comment in, in the in the evaluations about me. Like, you know, somebody saw me at another conference doing the same talk and they're like, oh, already saw this repetitive. Yeah, no kidding. Like, whatever. And so I've gotten to the point where I also believe it or not, put myself in a, in a, a, a career where I have to deal with being judged endlessly. So I understand what you're going through. But I love this idea of you saying, you know, about the speaking part, you might hear a bunch of no's, then you're going to get a yes. But I want to just remind you that the fact that you got a yes right away, no matter how that ends up, you know, is, is a sign of you being in the right direction. So for you, this looks like putting yourself up for opportunities for speaking engagements. What else is this? What other ways are you going to seek to be rejected? Well, I, I want to add to what you said, because you and I mm-hmm. have both talked about the idea that, you know, when we hear a negative comment, we get something like bad feedback. We're, we're so hard on ourselves anyway. And so for me, there I feel that there is a positive outcome on the other end of, of this endeavor, regardless of it being a yes or a no. Now, to clarify, I am genuinely seeking 100 no's. And, and for that is, I, I think that, of course, getting, hearing a yes is a positive, is a positive result because that's, that's, you know, progressing into the thing that I want to do. Um, but hearing a no, I think is really important for me. And it's why I kind of mentioned like in this entire book, this is the half a page that stood out is really important for me because I don't, I don't like rejection. I don't handle it well. And I do think that it would help me like kind of toughen my skin a little bit and be able to accept that or maybe take that constructive criticism. Like I'm always, I I always enjoy, or I don't, I don't enjoy it, but I do seek out constructive feedback. You're very, you're very good with constructive feedback, probably more than anybody I know. Uh, I'm asking this because this is an interesting thought. So maybe I'm, I'm overly simplifying this, but sometimes I feel like the simple questions have to be asked when you're seeking a no, you're sort of setting yourself up to seek out something that you're fairly confident. Like, for example, can I use me as an example? Yeah. <clears throat> this would be like if I contacted Joe Rogan and said, yeah. I'd really like to be on your podcast. I, you know, I've written three books. I'm writing a fourth. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a national speaker. I'm going to get a no. So is it that kind of thing? Like you're, you're shooting so high that you know you're going to get a no? <clears throat> yeah. I'm but pretty confident. Se- I'm pretty – no, sorry. Sorry. Uh, but no, but are you secretly – I guess what I want to understand is, are you secretly hoping that like, like, am I secretly hoping when I reach out to Tony Robbins that he says, yes, I'd I'd love to bring you on board to speak at my next event. Am I secretly hoping he says yes? Or am I just literally, I'm, I'm going to just shoot so high that it's going to be a no so that I can experience the rejection. That's where I'm, I'm torn with this. Cause I'm trying to understand if this yeah. like comedy writer was asking a hundred different people to look at her stuff, secretly hoping like five of them were going to say yes, or she legitimately knows Jerry Seinfeld is going to say no to her to write, yeah. you know, for his next tour. Well, I'll put it in terms of, of like how, how I've mapped some of this out. Like I, I'm pretty confident Dave Ramsey's not going to like say yes to me being on his show. I'm pretty confident Ed Milet or Tony Robbins is not going to come on to our show. That's not going to stop me from asking. And when I say asking, I don't mean like emailing their PR person. I mean like putting myself in a position and that, that could be, um, I'd like, I'd like to try to meet Ed Milet, but that could also be sending videos somehow, um, Actually, I'll back up. I, I did this a couple of years ago. I was on a podcast uh, for somebody that's like very well known in our industry. His name is Michael Kitsis. And uh, if he's if he listens to this or not, he might actually come on our show. But I'm confident that one of the reasons he ultimately said yes to me being on his show was that I um, I got somehow in touch with like his personal assistant. Okay. And and after getting in touch with that personal assistant, I sent like follow-up videos to this personal assistant. I connected with this person on LinkedIn. I sent a gift to this personal assistant. Like I would, I basically was relentless in, I wouldn't leave this person alone. So I was top of mind, top of mind, top of mind. And then when finally they were opening up the candidacy for, for people uh, to be guests on the show, who was top of mind? Me. 
because I just wouldn't, I wouldn't leave her alone <laughs> basically on, on social media. And so I think that, can, I think this can be done in a virtual setting too. I don't think it has to be like, you have to fly to this person and be in this, in, in the situation with them. But I also would say that um, some of them are, some of, the, some of those, like, I, I expect those to be no. There are other ones where I'm expecting them all to be no, but they're from a relative stance of, I guess, percentage of success. Some are going to have a higher probability of success than others. So, you know, a whale of a prospect of somebody that I, you know, uh, uh, that a, a client knows that I'm you know going to put myself in touch with, will they say no initially? Yes. But will I be on their radar and will I stay connected with them? And will I do all the right things to build a relationship with them? So, you know, some of them are more relative to, I guess their, the probability of outcome of yes is can rank. They're, they're all, they're all, they're all 100. Uh, it's a list of 100 that I project to be no, um, but I don't plan on just hearing no and then moving on either. And it's like also that. the, it's also the exercise of pushing yourself. So I'm, if I use the gym component, it would be like, you know, I've always curled 50, 45 pound dumbbells. That's my, yeah. that's my, that, and that's, that's my set. That's the weight that I use when I do dumbbell curls. That's freaking solid, by the way. Is that, so, is that good? I don't curl 45 pound dumbbells. Oh man, really? Yeah. Your, your arms are jacked, dude. I don't, You're, I do not curl 45 pound dumbbells. Well, that's my, that's my weight that I, I warm up with 40 and then I do one set of 40 and then I do three sets, 45, usually uh, six to 10 reps. And so I'm pretty strong bicep wise. Um, so that would be like me saying, I'm going to do fifties today yeah. because I know yeah. I'm going to fail. I'm only going to be able to do three or whatever, 55. I won't be able to do 55, but whatever. So it's, it's putting, as I want people to understand this, it, you said at the beginning, it's not to be a glutton for punishment, but it's to put yourself in situations where the likelihood of rejection is high for reason a, so that you could be tougher to deal with rejection. Reason B you're possibly putting yourself in a situation where you might get a surprise. Hey, listen, listen, I've seen some pretty big people for reasons that I don't like. I'll scroll YouTube and see somebody on YouTube with like 12,000, 15, 20,000 followers. And that's a lot for me. But for the for a YouTuber, when you see these people with millions of followers, it's not. And I'll see some really big person be a guest on their show. Now, who knows? Maybe their cousin knows the cousin of the friend or whatever. But you wonder if sometimes if it was a matter of what you did, that they just pursued the person enough or yeah. <clears throat> or the person was intrigued by them and thought, this is a cool guy. You know, I, I've been on TikTok for a while and I'm I'm not a celebrity chaser on TikTok. I, I just, there are some people that are, I've just never been, you know, I won't say names of, of the celebrities, but there are celebrities that were really popular during the pandemic and everybody was trying to get them to follow them. And I never really, don't think I ever really fell into that. But I, I've had this one person that I've always really, really liked. Um, I used to watch his show, John Edwards. He's a psychic medium. And oh, I've always just really, name. yeah, he's this really cool guy. And I just always liked him. Whether you believe in the psychic medium stuff or not is, is immaterial. And one day he randomly commented on one of my t- TikToks and then he followed me and I was already following him. And I thought that was really cool. The other one, and I shared this with you, I commented on a Tony Robbins post yeah, and, and yeah. just said, you know, that, uh, and he commented something like, this is really special. What a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing. And that, he doesn't follow me, of course. That touched me so much. The reason why I say that is that's a very silly version of what you're saying, that where you maybe tag people in things that you know it's a long shot and you're going to get rejected. Or, you know, for people that aren't in business, maybe you're single. And and imagine what it would be if you asked 100 people to dance. Uh, or you asked a hundred people out on a date or you asked a hundred, whatever, whatever. I'm not single. So I don't know what single people do now. Maybe it's a dating app. So I don't know. You swiped whatever on a dating app, whatever it is, but knowing that you're probably going to get rejected, but that, that strengthening of maybe the more you get rejected, the less it affects you. You know, maybe yeah. I should as a speaker, why haven't I submitted myself for a Ted talk? I've seen Ted talks that I oh, think some of my stuff is better than rush it. On well, a I don't know talk. if I would crush it, but I think it's my own. I'm, they're going to say, no, they're going to say, I'm not, I'm not, you know, a Brene Brown, you know, it's, they're going to say no yet. You know, I a couple of weeks ago spoke in front of 1500 people and got a standing ovation. So maybe I'm not that bad, but to be honest with you, there's been times that I've spoken and it was like, they said, you know, we really liked, it, it was really great, you know, but I, then they didn't ask me back. So who knows? 
yeah. I, I just think that I, I what I'm what I'm hearing from this is you putting yourself in situations where it will toughen your skin, where you will push yourself, and where you will potentially be in front of or talking to or reaching out to people that are maybe a bump above you, but one of them at some point out of a hundred, out of these hundred chances you're going to take, what if one of them is a yes? Well, that could be. A if big I go deal. O for 100 and I whiff a hundred times, then maybe I, uh, I'm going <laughs> to, you and Matt are going to have to hold me at the end of, at the end of the year. <laughs> we'll we'll go in a sad, in a we'll sad place. We'll put, something, other, we'll, put something, thing, we'll put something different on your vision board. Yeah, exactly. Well, the other thing is, um, just the sheer fact of recording this and putting this out there, you know, it, it makes it, it also creates a different level of accountability, uh, which is why I was excited to record this conversation because it's, it's, I mean, we're recording this on, on, you know, at the very beginning of the year. Yeah. On new year's. And so it's like, everyone is thinking about positive goals for themselves going into, you know, new year's resolution time. And so for me, this was, this, this was a, Maybe an additional layer of really pushing myself accountability. forward with this goal. Account- accountability. accountability. Well, now, now when I'm in the gym, anybody that listens to us, if I'm in the gym and I'm curling less than 40, people are going to go up to me and go, curl 45 pound dumbbells, huh? Oh, <laughs> right. So yeah, no, it's true. Hey, listen, I love that. I think this yeah. is a great, I think this is a great challenge. I think this is a wonderful thing. I want to think, I want to be really thoughtful about this for myself, about, you know, in my business funnel for my company and and for speaking opportunities and for the book that I'm writing right now, yeah. you know, what are ways that I can, I, I, so I kind of did this knowing that we were knowing that we were going to have this conversation. I did, I did a thing. So, um, I posted about our podcast on Instagram and on TikTok, and I tagged Tony Robbins on both of them. Now I did that because it's, sweat. Because it's embarrassing because people will see that. And A, first of all, people think it's celebrity chasing. But B, if you asked me five living people who would be in the five, you know, my top three would be Tony Robbins, Tim Ferriss, and I just, man, I'm so embarrassed when I pull blanks on names. Um Give me a second. I, I just I love I that a, you asked yourself this question and you're not prepared for the answer, by the way. I do. Well, that's just because I'm honest and and <laughs> I, t- Tyler Perry, the name came to me, Tyler oh, Perry. Oh, okay. I, I would love if if I living people, uh, there's more than that, but my top three top in my top five would be Tyler Perry, Tony Tony Robbins, and Tim Ferriss. Those like would that. be people that if I somebody said you can have two hours with them, I Tyler Perry, I would probably just start crying the second I saw him because I just feel like he and I would be best friends. I just love that man. Tony Robbins has been an influence on me since I was v- very young. Um, even, he's only a little bit older than I am, but old enough that I look, he started He's been in young. the space forever. Since he I was mean, in I, his I was 20s. a kid and I can like see the cassette tapes that my parents I, had. I, 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 I own the cassette tapes and that's what I said in my post him and he commented on it. And Tim Ferriss, and he changed my life and Tim Ferriss, Absolutely, one hundred percent changed my life. So the reason He's why part that of I, your tribe of mentors, <clears throat> he is. I didn't tag him on the podcast, but <clears throat> he is part of my tribe of mentors. Great book. Thanks I tagged Tony Robbins that. just to do it. it is yeah. one of his people going to see it? They're going to look at our podcast. I I don't know, but I challenge everybody to take this to take this to heart. And maybe it's not a hundred no's. Maybe it's five no's. Maybe it's one. Maybe it's one a week. Maybe it's whatever. But to put yourself out there, if if you're selling cars, to put yourself out there to reach out to a hundred prospects. If you're in a company where you know you're selling life insurance, or, so sales for sure. Um, if it's not sales, maybe it's bringing more clients to your restaurant somehow. Maybe it's mm-hmm. maybe whatever. I, I I can't think of every job and opportunity and whatever. Or in your personal life. Putting yourself out there in situations where you might get rejected, but what if you didn't? Like, and I think on the other end of it is what if? What if you didn't get rejected? Can I interject? I have a question for you before we before oh, wow. we wrap. And okay. so, obviously, New Year, new goals. Um, I know your vision board is like shoved in the closet, I'll but take it, out. Uh, take it out for me. Actually, in the next time we record, can you just have it like posted behind you? No, okay. no, too, yeah, no, too, I will. There's, I mean, I will. There's some okay. that are, you don't have to. No, I might. But my I question might. for you, for the audience, is um, what are what are some of your New Year's resolutions, or just 
I don't know if you believe in New Year's resolutions or not, but what's something that you're thinking of? If you had a theme for 2023 for you, what's something you're focusing on? Awareness. Beautiful. A- awareness, the spirit of awareness. And it goes kind of deep, but uh, I'll ask you this question. And this might be set up for another podcast. Um, people might not be able to see this, but uh, so t- point to John, point to John Kennedy. Okay. So John pointed to himself, to his body, but that's, that's not you, right? So this is the, like the emoji, the mind blowing emoji. You're not your body and you're not your mind, but you are the observer of those things. So your awareness, if you stopped and thought, what is aware of my body? What is aware of what I'm feeling? It's not your brain because they can't see thoughts. They can see electrical activity in the brain, but the mind is something different. And the mind is filled with thoughts and, and history and, and, you know, time is very confusing, the past, present, and future. If you look at a castle, you could say, this is something from the past, but that's not true because the time that it was built was that person's present and you're looking at that castle in the present. So this castle is in your present. In other words, what I'm saying is I'm focusing on this kind of higher mind, this other, the soul awareness And I've moved on to this thing of where multiple times a day, I ask myself, am I aware? And it has been freaky what has been happening in my life right now. You know, because of the text I sent you today. Yeah, yeah. That's (laughs) great though. What does this mean? But it's, it's a, I'll off, off podcast. I'll maybe later when we chat, I'll talk to you about it, but it's, I'm very new to it, but I have to tell you that it's this very spiritual presence of God. I believe in God. If you don't believe in God, universe, whatever you want to call it. But for me, I believe in God. Presence of God. There's this other thing. Like the person that's talking to you right now is there's, I am different. I I feel different. I'm, it's more about awareness where I sit there and I look at things and I'm like, I am observing what's going on. That is who I, I, that's the I is this pres, this, this spiritual thing. It's not my body. It's not my brain. Um, cause my thought, your thoughts are limiters. All your thoughts are really are tools to get you what you want in this world. Wow. So I, I am focused Oof. on awareness. I know. I'm, I'm That's kinda, deep. Woo. Well, so, but that, but what I, the reason I, I wanted to know the answer to that question is cause I feel like everyone is focusing on goals right now. And mine happens to be the year of 100 no's. I think we're going to talk about Matt's, which is the year of yes, which will be fun. Um, but I want to talk about yours too. And I, and I think what, what's useful for anyone listening is we're really just, you know, these are ideas. This, this is like stuff that we're each individually focusing on. But if someone pulls one or two things from it, we, for me, I learned so much when we do these podcasts. So part of the reason I want to do a podcast on this topic and us asking you these questions that you're asking me today is so that I can learn, so that I can think of life in a different way that I can come up with some goals or ideas Vice that, versa. Might be, that might apply right. in my life. Um, so I, I love that. That's going to be, no, awesome I love one. that. And, and as we wrap up, that's, that's a big thing. We do this podcast because it is a conversation. It is kind of our mastermind, the yeah. three of us. It's our way of yeah. bouncing things off of each other. We're similar in many ways, but we're extremely different in a lot of ways. Um, our ages are very different. Our experiences are very different. And I, I, I love this because I learn as well. And, you know, interesting to close this thought out, a book of 250 pages, <clears throat> you, you're you moved by what you described as about a page. a page and a half, I think, yep. or half, half a page, page. sorry, yep. half a page. Now, that's all that it takes, right? You can have a meeting with somebody for an hour, but they could say one sentence to you that changes your life. They we're, This podcast is going to wrap up just a little under 40 minutes. And let's say somebody likes this podcast, but maybe it was one thing you said, or one thing I said, one sentence you said, or one sentence I said, how, how many of us have had an experience, read a book, seen a play, seen a movie, listened to a speaker, listened to a podcast. And you say, I, you know, I, I was there for X amount of time. This is what I got out of it. I I very rarely have read a book where every single page I was like, ah, you know, it's usually it, it was, or you say, it was worth the time just for this. You could have gone to a restaurant and the meal was okay, but the dessert was through the roof. And you're like, I sat for an hour and a half dinner, but it was worth it for this dessert. You know what I mean? So hopefully you guys listening to this got a little bit of something out of this. We are very grateful, honestly, to have this opportunity 
I just want to say I'm very grateful to you, John, because you do do a lot of the back background work and the editing and the uploading. So thank you so much for taking that on because I know you're a busy guy. And I'm very honored to be able to, to work with both of you. I've posted about our our podcast on both my TikTok um, as The Rich Bee and on Instagram as Memento, M-E-M. E-N-T-O, the Rich Bee, and encourage people to listen, download, and share. We appreciate all of you for doing that. Thank you for boosting us up into the 2% of podcasts. I want to just uh, proactively thank Tony Robbins, Tyler Perry, and Tim Ferriss for the upcoming uh, meetings that we're going to have where I get to mastermind to meet with you. I appreciate you guys. And um, I just want to thank all of you all for listening on behalf of my good friend, John, my good friend, Matt, and myself for us here on Above Boy with Candor Path. Happy New Year. Happy 2023. And we look forward to catching you on the next one. Be well. Be well.